As we all know, baseball is the dominant sport on the Caribbean islands, unless it's a former British colony, in which case cricket is preferred. Or if that country happens to be Haiti. It really seems like Haiti should be a baseball country, especially since they share an island with the Dominican Republic, where baseball is by far the top sport. But there are some very important reasons why they never embraced the game, and why the game struggles to gain a following today, even though it's surrounded by baseball playing countries. Haiti is a former French colony, not Spanish, British, or Dutch like the other Caribbean nations. In 1804 they became the first Latin American colony to gain independence. It was in the late part of that century when baseball was introduced to the Caribbean islands. The Spanish did not like baseball. They wanted their colonies to celebrate the Spanish sport of bullfighting, and they ended up prohibiting baseball in the Spanish Empire. So for these Spanish colonies, baseball became a symbol of independence, and from there a part of their nation's history that is still carried on today. But Haiti had already been independent for quite some time, so baseball didn't hold the same symbolism. And in the first half of the 20th century, it came to represent the opposite. From 1915 to 1934, American forces occupied the country. U.S. Marines brought baseball with them, and Haitians began playing it. But after almost 20 years of occupation, the Americans left. The Haitian people wanted to rid their land of anything that reminded them of the occupation. So, baseball disappeared. For many Haitians today, the absence of baseball on their land symbolizes their resistance to the occupiers, while they view the embracing of the game by other Caribbean nations as a relic of their compliance with the occupiers. Indeed, when you search for baseball in Haiti on the internet, the first thing that comes up is an article making such an argument, and urging the Haitian people to resist any spreading of the game in Haiti today. I'm not sure how mainstream this opinion is among Haitian people. Very likely it's just a vocal minority, and most Haitians probably don't feel such a strong resentment towards baseball. Nevertheless, it can't be denied that the feeling does exist among some people there. They'll even point to the existence of the Rawlings Baseball Factory in Haiti during the 1970s and 80s as an American attempt to force the game upon them. Now you might be thinking that baseball's negative image could be changed drastically if they started producing million dollar ball players like the neighboring Dominican Republic has over the years. And you'd probably be right. Haiti is the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. Becoming a success in the baseball world would have them looking at the sport in a whole different way. This process could have begun already, but just across the border certain things are preventing an explosion of Haitian superstars. Out of the Dominican Republic's population of around 11 million people, as many as 1 million are Haitian immigrants. Many more have Haitian lineage. Minnesota Twins hitter Miguel Sano is one such player. There are several other Haitian Dominicans in MLB, but most of them aren't open about it. In order for any player to sign with a major league team and obtain a visa, he must have a birth certificate something many Haitian Dominicans don't have. Their births often take place in the home and simply aren't recorded. It used to be that fake documents were easy to get a hold of, but that's no longer the case. In recent years, MLB has required that every player go through an age and identity investigation to crack down on fraud. Teams had a right to know how old a player was before investing in his future. This included not only the proper documentation, but a DNA test as well. This new policy, unintentionally, made it even harder for athletes in the Haitian-Dominican community to land a major league contract. On top of the documentation issues, Haitian-Dominicans have a hard time just getting the chance to play in their youth. Their community is not well integrated into Dominican society. Lots of friction there, and government policy isn't always immigration friendly. This is all happening on the Dominican side of the border, not in Haiti, but you can't help but wonder what chain of events might occur under more favorable conditions. A few Haitians from the Dominican Republic become Major League superstars, inspiring a baseball boom in the Haitian community there, which spills across the border. Eventually MLB moves in and builds facilities there. But the problems I've just talked about are far beyond baseball's control, and you can't assume that these problems will ever work themselves out. The best they can do is to try and grow the game in Haiti, a process that is underway, but in the very early stages. Just after the big earthquake there in 2010, the first Little League team, the Tabari Tigers, were formed. By 2017, they had four teams with a total of 80 players and were able to hold the first championship with four umpires brought over from Cuba to call the game. Baseball has the support of the Haitian government. They've hired Jeff Howard, a former coach in the Florida Gulf Coast Summer College Baseball League, to coach their national team. Al Goldis, a former minor league player and MLB scout, was hired as the director of player development and program infrastructure. The government has also set aside 200 acres in the nation's capital of Port-au-Prince for the construction of facilities, and offered the manpower to build. They did not, however, offer any money for the project, so Haiti's Baseball and Softball Association is relying on donations from abroad. Money will always be an obstacle in Haiti, but like in other poor countries in that region, it can be overcome. 
Even without an explosion in homegrown talent, the country could put together a decent national team based on lineage and other connections to the country. 23-year-old outfielder Estevan Florial was born and raised in the Dominican Republic, but holds dual citizenship with Haiti because his mother was born there. In 2020, he made his debut with the New York Yankees. Tuki Toussaint is a 24-year-old pitcher who has spent the last three years with the Atlanta Braves. Though born in Florida, he lived in Haiti from the age of three months to six years. I've already mentioned Miguel Sano. A number of other Dominicans in MLB have Haitian lineage, though it's not clear how many and who exactly they are. One idea to beef up the roster for competitions involving amateur athletes is to scout the Montreal area. That is where the largest number of Haitians outside of Haiti can be found. So in summary, baseball is not a popular sport in Haiti, mostly due to their history, which is completely different from the other Caribbean nations. They share the island of Hispaniola with one of the great baseball powers of the world, but complicated issues that have nothing to do with baseball are preventing them from sharing their neighbor's success. The game is growing there, but it's got a very long way to go. And a lot of Haitians can play baseball. They just weren't born and raised there. Will it ever become a baseball country? Hard to tell. Lots of potential. A lot of roadblocks at the same time. That's all for this one. Until next time, this is Baseball International. See ya.